Paul Dixie here. A year ago, I put out a video titled Hiker Terms in which I defined some of the hiker terminology that you will find along backpacking trails. Since it's been a little while and I realized that after through hiking the PCT, I left some out and some were actually um, more important to my experience than others, I figured I would go ahead and share some of those with you and do Hiker Terms Part 2. The first term I want to introduce is hiker funk. So I actually don't smell like rotten butt today. It's great. Now we all know that hikers are generally not the cleanest people in the world, especially if they've been out on trail for several days in a row without bathing. So that general stench that seems to accompany overly ripened hikers is what I like to call hiker funk. Next is puffy. So you'll hear hackers talk about, well, if I don't wear it at night, I use my puffy as a pillow. And what they're talking about is the coat that you'll see them wearing. It's got like baffles and it's either got synthetic or down fill material. And I felt like this was important to include because it's really one of the dead giveaways whenever you see through hikers or section hikers in town. I mean, that puffy coat just really gives you away. Bear bag. So before I started the AT, I read all this stuff about, you know, hanging a bear bag and I was like, is this like a certain special bag and what is it for? I don't understand. Well, what it is, is basically like a waterproof or highly water resistant bag. It can be any kind of bag really, um, that you just put all your food and anything that has any scent. So like toothpaste or any other toiletries and you're going to stuff it all in there, roll it up, clip it, and then hang it in a tree or on a bear cable. Um, just that way you don't have other critters including bears, trying to get in your tent and get your stuff at night. Bear burrito. So a bear burrito is a hammocker. Basically, a human body inside of a hammock is just the perfect bear burrito. Camel up or cameling up. So that is when a hiker sits at a water source and chugs a bunch of water in hopes of, well, I guess hydrating, but also not having to carry a whole lot between the point they're at and the next water source. I know a lot of hikers who did this on the AT, they would just chug a bunch of water at one water source and then maybe carry, you know, just enough to kind of sip on and wet their whistler until the next water source, which most times was only about four miles away or so. Now on the PCT, you've got longer water carries, but you know, you can still sit at a water source and camel up just to make sure that you're reminding yourself to stay hydrated. Puds. You'll hear hikers complain about this a lot and it means pointless up and downs. So you'll see the trail is going somewhere, you're like climbing up to maybe a saddle or something like that and then suddenly it drops back down. And then it climbs back up towards that same saddle and then it drops back down. And you see the whole time where you're going and you're like, why didn't they just make the trail go right up there, you know, slowly grade it up there. Why do I have to lose elevation and then climb again? It's just a pointless up and down. False summits. Now these are so frustrating. And if y'all have been out hiking, I'm sure that you're like nodding your head like, yes. A false summit is whenever you think that you're finally reaching the top of a climb. You know, you're getting to the top of the mountain, the summit. And you get up there to that point and then you see, nope, there's still another hill and another top. And it's very frustrating when there is a certain mountain or hill that you're climbing and it's got several false summits. But I guess that just means when you get to the true summit, it makes it a little bit sweeter. Hacker techs. So hiker techs are little notes that hikers will leave for one another because most of the time you don't have cell signal on trail and even if you do, your phone is most likely in airplane mode. You're not really even checking. So hikers will leave messages for one another, whether it's written with rocks, written in the sand, snow, or maybe even, you know, a little note written on paper with rocks stacked on top of it. And this could be like a warning or, you know, um, an indication that there's something special off trail that you should go check out or maybe letting a hiker behind them know that you know there's a change of plans and and what they were going to do or letting somebody know that you stopped to go off trail to camp you know just any kind of message that you want to send to another hacker h-y-o-h which means hack your own hack now i don't love this saying um i because it's become so misused and I will go into that. But basically what hike your own hike means is, you know, you need to let the trail be the experience that you want to have and, you know, don't necessarily let others and the way that they do things influence you and what you do. So if you want to hike in trail runners instead of boots, go for it. If you love your boots, that's fine. If you want to hike with a dog, that's great. If you want to 
walk on your hands from Georgia to Maine, you know, be the first through hacker to walk on your hands, great, go for it. Unfortunately, there are people who will misuse this and basically use it as an excuse to break the rules or violate leave no trace standards, act like a fool in town and get businesses shut down for other hackers, or make false claims to a through hack. Then whenever somebody questions this behavior, they'll basically say, you know, like, mind your own business, hack your own hack. So I think that that's why I get frustrated, just because, you know, it went from its original form of like, do your thing and be you to an excuse to just act like a total jerk. And moving along, the next one is FKT, and that stands for fastest known time. So this has been a trend for a while now. Basically folks just wanna get out there on a trail, whether it be the Florida Trail or the Penhody Trail or the CDT or the AT or the PCT, and they want to push their physical limits and see how fast they can finish the trail. It's more or less like an unofficial record, so like the ATC and um, the PCTA and you know those organizations don't necessarily keep up with it but you can find it online actually I'll include a link to um, one of the places where you know a lot of folks are talking about FKTs in the video information and some people do it unsupported so um, they have everything in their pack you know they walk to and from town like they're not getting any assistance whatsoever and then some people do it supported so um, maybe they're not carrying quite as much as they would be if they didn't have people meeting them along trail and things like that. A lot of people will say, well, why on earth would somebody want to do this? And this is where Hike Your Own Hike comes in because some people want to enjoy the trail very leisurely and enjoy the views and enjoy the critters. And some people hike the trail to push their physical abilities. So, you know, whatever works for you. The next one is Cairn. So you've probably seen Cairns marking the trail at some point. Usually it's above tree line, but Cairns are just man-made piles of rock that are an indication of where the trail is. A lot of times they are located to where if it's foggy, you know, they're close enough to where you can see them. And then also usually they're high enough to where if it snows like in the spring or the fall, you're still gonna be able to see them sticking up above the snow. The next couple I wanna cover are types of blazing. So in part one, I talk about white blazes on specifically the AT, which are the two by six rectangles that you will see painted on trees or fence posts or just you know rocks whatever and that tells you where the Appalachian Trail leads you know it lets you know you're still on the trail but folks have gotten created and have come up with all sorts of terms like you know pink blazing where you're hiking faster or slower if you're chasing a specific girl on trail or you know aqua blazing which is on the AT where there's a certain section of trail that people canoe instead of hike so they go on and on and on. So I've got two more that I didn't include in the last video that I wanna do here. The first one is silk blazing. So that is when you are the first one out on the trail in the morning and you're doing everyone the favor of cleaning out the spider webs. And next is brown blazing. So this one could have a couple different meanings. Brown blazing could be when you're cutting a path out, you know, you're running off trail to go find a place to, you know, take a crap. And uh, it can also be if you're hopping from privy to privy. So that would work better on the AT because there definitely are a lot more privies than say the PCT where there aren't quite as many. So basically you're trying to avoid, you know, taking a poo in the woods. So you just go from privy to privy to privy. Trail mance. So trail mance is a trail romance. That's basically when pink blazing becomes more than just pink blazing. Yes, there are people on the trail who meet and are interested in one another and it turns into a trail mance and I have seen some trail mances last and then I've also seen some that have crumbled, you know, as soon as the trail ended. But regardless, none of my business, but yes, trail mances do exist. Widowmaker. So a Widowmaker is a branch that is dead and is just hanging on in a tree, kind of caught up just waiting to fall and crush somebody in the head. So whenever you go to set up camp, just make sure that you take a second to kind of look around and make sure that you're not setting up right under a widow maker. Next is making cake. So I mentioned churn and butter in part one, which is kind of gross, um, but it's basically where sweat pours down your back and kind of runs into your butt crack. It tends to happen, especially like, you know, in the summertime, but all that grease and grime is just kind of like, you know, churning between your butt cheeks and is churning butter. It's gross, I know. So making cake is especially uh, when guys tend to, you know, use baby powder down there and everything to prevent chafing. 
So with all that, you know, butter and then the powder like flour, you get it making cake. Next is switchback. So that's basically where you're hiking along the side of a mountain and then whoop, it turns up and then you're hiking this way and then whoop, it turns up. So it's just those zigzags where you end up turning basically 180 degrees and hiking the opposite direction. Now on the AT, there aren't a whole lot of those switchbacks. I mean, there are some, but on the PCT, man, you'll spend 30 minutes climbing a mountain doing 40 something switchbacks, seeing the same exact view. But uh, I tell you, if you're hiking the PCT, just appreciate those. Cause on the AT folks are like, we could use a switchback or two. That'd be great. The vortex. So hackers refer to this when they're like, you know, I want to go into this town, but I'm going in real quick and I'm just getting my resupply and I'm getting right back out because I don't want to get stuck in the vortex. The vortex can also occur at like trail magic, especially if it's a pretty profound trail magic experience where folks are camped out for a weekend or something like that, uh, cooking food for hikers. So you end up stuck in the vortex for a couple of days or, you know, in town, there's a trail angel that lets you stay at their house for a couple of days. And, you know, the next thing you know, you hadn't been hiking and you don't really want to go back to the trail and you got caught in the vortex. Dry camping. On the AT, didn't do much dry camping because there are just tons of water sources. On the PCT, in certain areas, especially the desert, I had to get used to the idea of dry camping. That's essentially where you're camped out at a spot that has no water sources. So uh, you've had to tote all of the water that you're going to use for the night, for your dinner and for your breakfast if you cook, but you know, to drink, to brush your teeth, all that stuff. So it makes me nervous because if you end up knocking over your water, I mean, no, you're probably not going to dehydrate to death in one day. Um, but still it just, I don't know, the idea of not having more if you want it or need it is kind of frustrating. But again, uh, you'll get used to the idea if you end up hiking in the desert area of the PCT or any other trails that, you know, tend to not have a plethora of water sources. Bushwhacking. That's what you're doing when you're walking on a trail that's overgrown or maybe one that's been temporarily detoured or for some reason you have to take a route that is not very well established and basically you're walking through the bushes, you know, kind of pushing them aside. You're bushwhacking. Blowdowns. These are trees that have been blown down by the wind. Most of the time, if people are talking about them, it's because they're blown down over the trail. Now in the Sierra Nevada and the JMT area, there were a lot of trees that were also down due to avalanches, but I kind of in general refer to all of it as a blowdown because that's just kind of how we do. So what's the big deal about some trees over the trail? Well, I mean, yes, we're out in nature trying to enjoy it, but especially if you're trying to get from point A to point B in a certain time frame or whatever, uh, blowdowns can really slow you down because they become like a jungle gym, whether you're climbing up over them or having to go around them. So uh, if you experience a lot of blowdowns, which in Oregon, there are a significant amount, unless they've gone in and trail maintenance crews have cut them out. But anyway, if you ever experience them, you'll see what I mean about how it's frustrating. Graham weenie. This is a term for the folks that are super ultra light and they're measuring all of their gear down to the gram and shedding off every little gram that they don't need. So if you've done something like cutting tags out of your clothing, if you know which Ziplocs are the lightest because you've weighed them, or if you've considered or actually have used floss as shoelaces, you might be a gram weenie. The last one I have for y'all today is shart. So a shart is when you trust a fart and something extra comes out with it. Now I know some of y'all are thinking like, yeah, I've already heard of that before. It's not exclusive to hiking. Well, you're right, but I felt obliged to include it today because the truth is you're not a real hiker unless you've accidentally <laughs> your pants. And with that, I want to say thank y'all so much for watching. If you know of a term that wasn't included today and you didn't see it in part one either, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Thank you all again for watching and we will see y'all next time.